Hey folks, welcome to a new Let's Play from the Mysterious JG, hot on the heels of my Wings of Liberty Let's Play. Barely gave you guys time to catch your breath. It's time to play StarCraft 2 Episode 2, because now we have episodes, because we think we're freaking Star Wars. It's Heart of the Swarm. I kid, of course, with the hot on the heels thing. I played, hard, I played Wings of Liberty on my channel years ago. And, um, recent events, um... Just somehow went down a YouTube rabbit hole of speedrun, watching speedruns, and got interested in checking out Warcraft 3 Reforged. And while playing Warcraft 3 Reforged, I concluded I probably should have not played Warcraft 3 Reforged, and instead have gotten back into a game I used to love a lot. StarCraft, specifically, in this case, would be StarCraft 2. Um, and yeah, I've been, I don't know why, it's like, just random, like, the YouTube algorithms running my life. I've been watching like pro games of uh, StarCraft 2, and while I don't ever intend to play the game like a pro, it did make me nostalgic for playing the campaigns, and so I thought I would try to play Heart of the Swarm. Uh, so a couple things to bear in mind. Um, I don't want to talk too long before we get started, but as I'm doing this, I also really need to get going on my uh, Romance of Three Kingdoms 14 Let's Play. I expect more people will be interested in that than are interested in this, and... Um, as a result, I don't know exactly how often this will update. I said the same thing about Warcraft 3 and ended up updating it every day. I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, I might be doing two a week and then three a week of RTK. I might end up doing this once a week, particularly as these get longer. Um, you know, because you have missions that you can f clear fairly quickly at the beginning. By the end of the campaign, uh, particularly with me not being super skilled, it can take you an hour or 90 minutes to complete a mission. Um, but yeah, uh, I, um, hope we'll have fun with this. I also did a test video where for some reason I got very quickly got sound sync issues with my commentary in the game, which means that, uh, post editing on this might be a pain. I'm hoping I found some settings that make that go a little more smoothly, but, uh, yeah, we've already played Wings of Liberty off screen on my own. I played through the entire game, including Nova Covert Ops, which for some reason didn't register with Blizzard, um, Similarly, I had I played through all Warcraft three and and had like chunks of it not register, so maybe I was playing offline. I didn't know, but um, I uh, it's been long enough since I played Wings of Liberty that I only vaguely remember exactly where the story uh, is. But luckily for us, when we play Heart of the Swarm, we have the option of watching the story so far. For nearly three hundred years. Humans thought they were alone in the Caprulu sector. So we're going to cover 300 years of human history here, or, uh... The Zerg emerged, seeking to consume all in their path. Sure. And before long, the Protoss, a highly advanced alien race, oh. began... Oh. Okay, so they're going to recap the original StarCraft, not the first chapter of StarCraft II. I wonder if this is even going to recap uh, Wings of Liberty, or if it's just recap. If they just have one story so far, which recaps StarCraft One and Brood War. Mm -hmm. I always thought that's a little bit simplistic. He met Sarah Kerrigan like once. <laughs> and while Mengsk is revealed to be an evil asshole, it's it's a little bit. I don't think it's entirely about, like, there's this girl that Rainer was in love with. Like, Rainer kind of likes this Kerrigan person. She seems pretty cool. But there's more. Well, whatever. Let's listen here. Okay, well, they just covered uh, episode two of the original Brood War in about ten words. <laughs> So Artanis is officially the player character from the original StarCraft Protoss campaign, just if you didn't know. Tassadar seemed to get it faster than Artanis, but I shouldn't say that. Artanis is the player character in that game. They achieved significant victories against the using the mothership, a unit that didn't exist in the original StarCraft. His own mind was left vulnerable. From his thoughts, the Overmind gleaned Iyer's true location. Oh, never mind. This is still episode two. Upon the Protoss homeworld with all their might. No, I guess this. 
it was yeah, this is episode two. From extinction that day. But then the episode three, the... the Dark Templar. Well, I mean, I played through the game if you if you don't know the story of the original StarCraft. I was lost, but Artanis led the survivors to the Dark Templar's homeworld of Shakuras. And then the story really got kind of weird. The Templar were now in the Dark Templar's death. But the old prejudices weren't really set aside as the story exploits. Kerrigan sought control of all the Zerg, even enlisting the aid of old friends and enemies like Raynor, Manx, and Zeratul. What about Edmund Duke and uh the Queen of Blades betrayed? What's his name? Uh billions of humans and Protoss were killed. The Zergs. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember Reynard's best friend, uh, best Protoss friend's name. Zeratul suspected the Zerg had fallen under the control of dark forces. Darker than the Zerg themselves? Stating that an ancient entity, Amon was attempting to merge Protoss and Zerg lifeforms into an unholy hybrid, and that this evil might already have control of Kerrigan and her power. No, oh, never mind. They are recapping StarCraft II a bit. It was during this time that Executor Artanis, hailed as a hero, yeah, he was. was made leader of both the Templar and the Dark Templar. Oh, I didn't know that happened. As Hierarch, Artanis united both factions and promised to one day reclaim the glory they had lost on Ire. Mm-hmm. Raynor had vowed to see Kerrigan dead, but his retaliatory strike failed. Even his rebellion against Manx's tyranny proved ineffective against the Dominion's propaganda machine. Raynor was but basically a loser. Friends and mysterious new allies, mm -hmm. Raynor revived his campaign against the Dominion, scoring major victories on multiple fronts. But mysterious new allies like Little Jacob. Darkness ...and said the key to stopping Amon was the Queen of Blades. She was needed alive. And untouched. In a daring raid on the Zerg homeworld of Char, armies from the Dominion and Raynor, with help from Arcturus's son Valerian, aka Tsalpi, two thousand, to neutralize Kerrigan's power, three thousand maybe, from Amon's grasp. The Queen of Blades was helpless. The Dominion wanted her dead. Raynor couldn't allow it. I don't allow it. Okay, so they did recap Rings, Rings of Liberty here. Link, Rings of Liberty? The Hobbit, Rings of Liberty. It's okay. I got you. Without a leader, I got you naked uh, lady Rainer packed in nice and tight. With Valerian Minsk and began planning their next move. Okay, so I gotta... Uh, I gotta give them credit here. I thought they were just recapping the original StarCraft and they had like one recap video for everything. But no, that recapped the events of Wings of Liberty. So um, I don't know why I'm going to bother, but in my own words, yeah, you had the human campaign and the original StarCraft is um, the human player character, who I think is Matt Horner, but maybe not. Uh, and Rainer kind of, they're, they're, you know, various things happen and they're in a situation where they end up helping uh, Minx come to power without realizing just how terrible he is. And they don't really understand until it's too late where they break off and flee. And, uh, but yeah, the, it's the, it's the rise of Minx because the leader of the Terran Dominion is the first chapter, which also includes Sarah Kerrigan, who is a human psychic who flirts a bit with Raynor in like one scene, although StarCraft II acts like they were madly in love, but really they flirt. And then Kerrigan gets left behind, abandoned, with an army of Zerg rushing forward. Chapter 2 shows her being turned into the Zerg-human hybrid that we see here. She's kind of this angry, psychically gifted, we're not really sure what to make of her, but the story really is about the Zerg finding the Protoss homeworld of Ire and landing the Overmind on it. Then the Protoss one is where the story actually kind of comes together a bit more, because you find out about who the Protoss are. These two factions they have, the the Conclave, who are into the Kala, and like, it's it's not just a religion, it's also this like, psychic bond they all share, where they're, they're, their minds are directly connected in this Kala, but the Dark Templar are ones who've choos chosen to cut themselves off from the psychic connection. That will matter in the StarCraft II Protoss stuff, doesn't really matter right now. But yeah, they uh, defeat the Overmind. Uh, and then Brood War is a really confused mess. Uh, you start off with the story of the Protoss, and they're they're all hanging out together on 
the home world that the Dark Templar have taken up residence on, which gets attacked by the Zerg, but then plot happens and they get rid of the Zerg. Then the United Earth Directorate shows up in the human campaign. They are a uh, sort of starship trooper style fascist human uh, group that comes to fight. They wanted to get rid of the Zerg and the Protoss and make the Caprulu sector safe for humanity, but ruled by the fascist dictatorship of Earth. I guess we assume they're fascist. We don't really find out that much about Earth. But nobody, like uh, the Terran Dominion, the Dominion fights them because the Terran Dominion makes force is not affiliated with Earth and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then the Zerg campaign is about basically, it's just nonsense. It's everything being reset to the beginning with Terrans, Protoss, and humans all still existing and not necessarily being allied. And, but uh, at the end of Brood War, Kerrigan is the ruler of the Zerg, and she's really powerful and dangerous and blah, blah, blah. And then if you watched uh, Wings of my Wings of Liberty Let's Play like 800 years ago, it's one of the more satisfying ones. Part of me is like, why, why am I recording uh, Heart of the Swarm? Why don't I just play that again off screen and not record it for fun? But that's like Raynor leading a ragtag boot group of Terrans to fight against the evil Dominion. But along the way, as he's trying to fight the Dominion, he doesn't really overthrow the Dominion, but he does get contacted by his old ally Zeratul, who's the Dark Templar. He's part of the group of Protoss that were willing to work together with humanity to stop the Zerg from taking over everything. There's some weird prophecy about an evil force that's going to destroy everyone, and the key to stopping it is Kerrigan, but she has to be kept alive. And the final couple of missions of Wings of Liberty are about the Terrans, led by Raynor, going to Char, capturing Kerrigan alive, and using some crazy Zelnaga artifact in the Zelnaga. I haven't explained them either. They're like the precursor race. They're a mysterious, long-extinct race that created both the Zerg and the Protoss. They use some Zelnaga um, superpower to make Kerrigan human again. And that's how the campaign of uh, Wings of Liberty ends. And I was shocked at the time. First time I played through, I was like, wow, I thought it was like a really big part of their whole storytelling that Kerrigan was this like big time evil badass, uh, you know, Zerg female, hi or, you know, human female hybrid character. I was shocked that they wiped that away. And therefore, I was interested in where the story was going to go from here, because even though we're seeing, like, scary Zerg Kerrigan, uh, she got turned into a human at the end of the last uh, bit of stuff. So what I'm going to do actually here is is pause and see if this recorded, and uh, I will tack it together onto some gameplay um, if everything took properly. So uh, I'm saying goodbye, but for you guys, uh, I'll be right back. Hey, back, and... Uh, Yep, things look like they took pretty well, so I'm quite pleased, and we will carry on and do a mission uh, before we call this a video. Um, so yeah, a lot of yakking up front, as is normal with my Let's Plays, if you're used to them. But we should be segueing into getting to the action a little faster. And it's Phoenix! I can't remember, I can't believe I couldn't remember the name Phoenix, but Phoenix was the character I was trying to remember. Jungle Jim Rainer's best buddy, Phoenix. I always found, again, just tiny little bits of dialogue, and they, you can make too much of them in your mind. There's like two scenes where uh, Kerrigan and Raynor talk to each other that we're supposed to glean from it that they're madly in love. But to me, the handful of little scenes, like there's only one I really remember clearly, maybe two, with Phoenix talking to Raynor. They are thrown together in um, basically in Brood War. Uh, like while we, the Protoss is playing as Artanis who has gone to um, Shakuris, uh, evacuating most of the Protoss. But Raynor and Phoenix are part of a delaying action to stop the Zerg from killing them before they can get to a warp gate to take them to Shakuris. And then they show up much later in the story. So you don't play as Raynor or Phoenix. What well, you do, you play as Phoenix in a specific mission. But it's like much later after he and Raynor are both kind of allies aiding Kerrigan with something. And there's just this little scene with, like, like Phoenix being like, Oh, Commander Raider, I may be a thousand of your Earth years old, but I can still throw down with the best of them. And it's just this little implication that while fighting together, it's these mismatched... Phoenix is this Protoss warrior who... Uh, he's, his body's been put in a dragoon, but he's like, you know, warrior dude, like honor fighting man. 
and Rainer is Rainer, and like they become buddies and cross cultural design or uh, cultural barriers. And yeah, I, just, I really like that. But I don't know why I'm talking about it. We should be getting on with Heart of the Swarm. Now, I played it off screen on normal, I guess. Uh, so let's try it on hard. And this is going to me. So I, I kind of did put some thought into this. Um, back when I played um, the Terran campaign, Wings of Liberty, I started on normal. It was too easy. I switched to hard later. The thing about is StarCraft II campaign for me and my skill level is normal's a little too easy. Hard can be a little too hard on the late missions because I like getting all the op like the, the bonus objectives and side stuff. And it can get really difficult. And when I played through Wings of Liberty, I really forced myself to play through from beginning to end of a mission without using save load to, you know, oh, I got attacked and I didn't have defenses in the right place and I got crushed. Then when I played Warcraft 3 recently, I didn't worry about that. I was just like, oh, I'll save in the middle of a mission periodically. And if things fall apart, I might just go back to my most recent save rather than starting the whole mission over. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Let me know if anybody has really strong feelings. Because like back when I played the original Starcraft and Brood War, it was the same way. It was like I made it a big deal as a point of pride. I might not be the most skilled player ever, but I'm going to play through the entire mission and either win or lose. And there were a few few ones like to slay the beast where it was tough. And I had uh, I had failure videos that I didn't even upload. And then uh, Wings of Liberty, I really only had one mission where I uploaded a video where I completely failed outright, but I had a lot of close calls. I think I'm just going to play on hard from jump, but not worry too much about like if I get crushed uh, and the game has been auto saving periodically, I'll just go back to an auto save. I won't make myself do an entire camp uh, mission from scratch. Um, and anybody who really is, wants to pay attention to whether I won legit without dying at all, you can track that if you want to. Uh, but I'll play hard. Oh, okay. Opening credits. That's nice. It's kind of neat. It, it recreates that feeling of this is a fresh new game out of the box, not something that you've had on your account for 10 years or whatever. Okay, so Vikings attacking a Leviathan, I guess. I am the swarm. The armies will be shattered. Worlds will burn. Yeah, but she's like not a monster anymore, I thought. Alright, duck and cover, guys. I always associate red marines with the Dominion. Yeah, Ultralisks are going to be enough to take down a tank in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And the Zerg definitely have their own style about them as far as being not to be messed with. But you really need some bunkers. You don't want to just have tanks in siege mode with nothing between them and the enemy that's charging them. As great as tanks in siege mode are, yeah, loose marines are not the way. But this is like a fun cinematic. It really captures like gameplay elements here. If there's banelings charging, zergs always work best with masses of units. You can't just tear down that Minx statue. That's our history. It doesn't belong in a museum. It belongs on the street where people who were oppressed by Minx can see it and remember. And not get up at him. Sorry. I'm kidding. Yeah, she's here destroying our history, tearing down our... Well, it's not a Confederate memorial. That would be a statue of Edmund Duke. Because this game did have a Terran Confederacy. Oh, so she's human except for her hair. Interesting. So the Zelnaga artifact apparently zapped away all the Zergness about her except her hair is still weird. 
Anyway, StarCraft II, Heart of the Swarm. And I was very looking forward to this when it came out because the Zerg is my favorite species to play as. Uh, I don't know that I'm particularly good with any of the species, but I like playing as the Zerg. Prologue. With the disappearance of the Queen of Blades, the Zerg Swarm has been shattered. Jim Rayner's rebel forces have been have smuggled Sarah Kerrigan off Jar, leaving the planet to General Warfield and the Dominion. Meanwhile, the powerful Zelnog artifact has disappeared. What? How? I guess the Dominion has it. Yeah, the end of StarCraft II, uh, Wings of Liberty, it did get a bit confused to me because the final bit of the campaign is... is so Ar Arcturus Minx, the evil dictator whom we hate because he betrayed us, he betrayed Sarah Kerrigan, blah, blah, blah. He, his son, Valerian, in an attempt to like surpass his father, because there's, there's no indication that Valerian wants to restore democracy or that there ever was democracy, um, because uh, Minx overthrows the Terran Confederacy, which is also implied to be a militaristic bad, not democratic type of regime. But yeah, Valerian Minsk uh, works with you on a secret project to use Ra Rainer's Raiders to eliminate Kerrigan. And he's doing that so that he will have a great win amongst the people and will be known as more than just Arcturus's son. Uh, so that was all a bit weird. But again, what happens to the Zelnaga artifact? I'm not sure. In a hidden base... In the Umojin Protectorate, Rainer and Prince Valerian have begun conducting tests to ensure that Kerrigan's return to humanity is complete. I guess what I'm getting at is I've never understood the relationship between Arcturus Mengsk and Valerian Mengsk, and I don't know that it's going to get explored here either. Yeah, that somehow Valerian is a good guy, even though he's the son of like the biggest evil dude of all, and is not openly rebelling against him or anything like that. But they are running out of time. Throughout the sector, Emperor Mengsk forces carry out a relentless hunt for the Dominion's most hated enemy, Sarah Kerrigan. I thought Rainer was the most hated, but Sarah Kerrigan, until recently when she got desergified, was certainly the most dangerous enemy to the Dominion. Remotion Protectorate. Remote planetoid catalog. Blah, 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 blah. If you want to know what the Emotion Protectorate is, go read the wiki. I, I do not remember what it is. I think it's not part of the Dominion. Open the door, son. Valerian's orders, sir. No visit. Open the door. Yeah, Silver would be... Silver I used to always think of as being the UED. I guess they're just randos. Because red always means Dominion and blue always tends to mean Rainer's Raiders. I would think Valerian would specifically tell them not to let in Rainer. Say, so don't tell them, don't tell them I told you not to let him in, but he specifically is who I don't want you to let in. Good morning, Commander. <laughs> Gentlemen, the test protocol will begin in two minutes. Ladies, it will begin in seven cents on the dollar, two minutes. 70% of two minutes, whatever that is. Being silly. They have a little privacy on the can? Jeez. Make the most of this test. It's your last one. Jim Rayner, the man that I'm desperately in love with, even though we met for like 20 minutes before I turned all evil, I'm in. Mean. We're getting out of here tonight. I guess it's not just psychic power. She's also telekinetic. Can go after Minsk. Forget Minsk. Forget all of it. This is about you and me. They finally get to have sex. Both of them realize they don't have as much chemistry as they thought, and the entire first game of StarCraft II is rendered hell. To bring you back, I can't watch you throw that away just for revenge. Initiating test phase two. Killing Jim Raider to see how Sarah reacts. Don't give up on the baby. Again, they met for like a couple of minutes. They had kind of a mutual attraction, a little bit of kind of flirty teasing, and uh, 
Then they were separated by circumstance. Test phase two, commencing. I mean, I will admit the story of the second game has a lot more punch if you buy into this notion they're in love, but it's a bit what forced. What are you hoping to get out of these tests, Valerian? I told you, I don't remember anything about being the Queen of Blades. I'm not even a Duchess of Blades anymore. I have to find out how much of the Zerg mutagen is left in your system. I appreciate your cooperation, Kerrigan. Mm, it's easier than forcing you through torture. Do you keep cooperative people in a containment cell? When we know it's safe, I'll unlock your door myself. Now, can you reach out with your mind? Do you sense it? Uh, you can tell by this collar in the portraits I don't have ultra graphics selected. Are you really asking me to take control of a Zerg mind? Do you know what could happen? I could have the personality of that drone. All subjects are in a secure environment. Well, we're gonna select the drone. Are you able to control it? Is she here? I don't see her here. Left click the drone to select it. Fine. Yeah, I have it. See, I'm making a okay. dance around. The next step. Mm. See if you can order the drone to mutate into a hatchery. Well, I guess this is one way to explain the uh, tutorial. A hatchery is the central structure of a Zerg base. It spreads creep so that other structures can be built. Okay, thanks for explaining that, Adjutant. It produces lava, which you use to morph into more drones or other Zerg creatures. When you use lava, the hatchery will replenish them over time. Pretty sweet, huh? Okay, Kerrigan. I'm releasing more drones into the test chamber. See if you can order them to gather those resources. Well done, I me. Doing a great job of commanding drones to gather resources, guys. I know it's hard mode, but I got this all locked. Uh, harvest minerals, 300, okay, well. It's not gonna let me harvest, or harvest, it's not gonna let me spawn an overmind yet. Can you morph more drones? No, my control is blocked. To morph anything else. Do it then. One overlord shouldn't hurt. Oh, you're a, you're a dummy. The Zerg use overlords to generate more supply. Your current supply maximum is displayed in the upper right corner of the screen, along with how much supply you are currently using. Yeah, this is not a good idea, if you of have Valerian. Supply, you will not be able to morph a unit. And I will tell you, spawn more overlords, except I'll have like a crazy Zerg voice. Important thing to note, overlords do not are not detectors in this game. They can be upgraded to be detectors. But they do not default as detectors. Excellent. I plan to stop here, but let's take this a little further. Because I'm dumb. Try mutating a drone into a spawning pool. Oh, you idiot. You. I never had 300 minerals, did I? I guess maybe I had. To mutate a Zerg structure, first select. Okay, I accidentally cut off that dialogue. This is a really bad idea, Valerian, if you don't want Zerg taking over your ship. <laughs> The spawning pool allows the hatchery to turn lava into zerglings. But it's nice to know that she still controls Zerg, even though she's been turned human, so... You know this is going to end badly, right? Yeah, she's pretty open about this. We have a controlled environment. She's being pretty honest about the fact that she's going to murder them all. The spawning pool is finished. You should go down to the test chamber and inspect it. I can see just fine from up here, thanks. I think that's all we need today, Kerrigan. Great work. If you think that was great work, wait till you see this. I'll make some zerglings. Now yeah, they're going to act like this isn't the logical place for this to go. I don't know why I decided to morph another overlord. I guess I just want to do overkill on how many zerglings we do, but... To create zerglings, left-click on the select lava button on the command card. <sighs> Okay, 50 and 1, so yeah, we can do all 6. Kerrigan, what are you doing? What are you doing, Dave? Putting your controlled environment to the test. Please don't do that. I want to be your friend, not your murder victim. Ugh. 
Cool. So we got some zerglings. Smaller top zerg. Stop! I didn't ask you to create zerglings. You're not obeying my commands. I'm not controlling you. They never do what you expect. Unless you expect them to go for specific builds. Because you're a pro player. Lockdown on the sublevel and power up the eradicator. Nothing gets out. Maybe if I destroy your pretty eradicator, you'll learn you can't control the Zerg. Yeah, because this is a recurring theme in uh, StarCraft 1. Humans trying to use the Zerg as weapons and it not working out. I sense more Zerglings in holding pens. Valerian, you were very careless. Yeah, that's kind of... I'll free them, too. This is kind of dumb. The... So there's no point in stretching this one out, and I'm not intending to stretch it out. I just uh, figured I would get a little bit more economy going so that I can... Uh... eventually uh, just produce more Zergling as I need more Zergling. So once I get 300 uh, minerals again, do another round of Zergling. Containment breach. Zerg specimens free. Evacuate the scientists. Get all personnel out of there. Need some knowledge. Talk to a scientist. Sentry bots, pretty pathetic. They are, after all, the enemy in the tutorial level. Oh, they're patching up a wounded Zergling over here. That's nice. More Zerglings. Good. I can use them. Yeah, they don't even really make you build an army. They just kind of... Oh, see, they're, they're performing surgery on some uh, Hydralisks there. So, Zerglings. Zero armor. 0.7 weapon speed, 5 damage. These guys here, 0 armor, 5 damage, but they're badly outnumbered. Uh, and yeah, they're just kind of pathetic jobbers who don't really exist outside of this mission that I can remember. Let's make more Zerglings, and we're not going to need them. Go, oh, well, I'm short for overlords anyway. Because yeah, the mission is just going to give me more Zerg. It never is with the Zerg. Like, why is, she, why is she being so mean to Valerian? He's only been nice to her. You cannot control this unit. We need to make sure you know that. We thought you might be confused. Apparently I can't, uh, command all military units in this, uh, reality. No more personnel remain on sub level, so they they followed your orders. Yeah, anyway, this is basic uh, movement command stuff, so we're not expecting challenges. Oh! That containment door won't open until I destroy those turrets. That gas is hurting my zerglings. I love my zerglings, and I don't want to see them hurt. Okay. Your forces are under attack. I'm missing all the actions so that I can make more Zerg that we're probably not going to need, but. There's a generator. It will release even more Zerg. Lings. Nothing can be done for these uh, Hydra Lists that are on the operating table, though. I guess they don't have very good insurance. Yeah, that really wasn't in dispute, Kerrigan. I mean...
Your forces are under attack. So releasing the Zerg is just an optional objective, but it's usually a good idea to do the optional objectives. We got some really herky jerky controls here. I'm trying to figure out if it's the fault of my mouse. And uh what are you? You are a lab bot. Let's destroy you. Oh, never mind. It's it's hovering, so I can't. Uh... I'm still in your containment cell. Oh, was that what this is about, Shaw? I'll let you out here. I'll even give you a million more Zerg. And Sarah Kerrigan continues her plan to take over the entire universe using nothing but Zergling. Which I think was one of the videos that got me on this kick about playing this game again was a uh, Can you win uh, Heart of the Swarm using only Zergling? Oh, I've got to go this way to get there. Alright, never mind. That would explain why I can't uh, make any progress here. Eradicator activated. Ooh, it's a slightly less shitty tank. Try to avoid killing it till we've killed everything else. Nah, it's not gonna be possible. I mean, I, I could force my guys not to attack it, but oh wow, they they produce pr pretty quickly. Oh, and even more Zerg. Man, he was making a lot of Zergling on his own. Situation critical. The Zerg have overrun the sub level. You're lucky no one was killed. Karen. Are you sure no one was killed? I guess plot wise. That scientist escaping. You understand how dangerous the Zerg are. I'll send them back to their pens. So that you can gas me. I appreciate that. I'm opening your cell right now, if you'd like to join me. This really seems unwise. Time you can make your point without destroying half the facility. She just proved she can't be trusted. <laughs> I guess the idea is that she could have done more damage, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, complete the lab rat mission in less than ten minutes on normal. Destroy 35 sentry bots. The achievements are going to be all jacked up because I already played through the game once, so... It is what it is. Um, I guess I could have called it a video right there, but let's see. It'll be a while before we get control over when we start missions, I suppose. Research station Ebb 103. It's before 6 o'clock in the morning. Wow, these guys start early. Oh, that was fun. You, made a mess down there, Sarah. you really you should uh, wipe up. Back? <laughs> Never. Because you would have killed everyone if you were still totally Zergified. I'm sorry. I liked Tychus, actually. He made his choice. I, made mine. I figured I'd rather have sex with you than him. Kill me. I slaughtered millions as the Queen of Blades. Well, yeah, but... That wasn't you, Sarah. Leave the past behind, and let's focus on getting out of here. She killed I'll Phoenix. Up, I thought he was your bestie. Okay. That sounds good. Because the, the, there was a little shift in the writing along the way. Oh. And we're ready to go. Head your way now. Back in the saddle. Yeah, there was a little shift somewhere along the way, because uh, there was a moment, which I rather enjoyed, in Brood War... Yeah, Phoenix is a Protoss who fights uh, with Raynor against the out-of-control Zerg on Ayr. Eh, plot, plot, plot. But the point was, yeah, the, the Zerg invade Ayr, the Overmind gets killed, so the Zerg ground forces that are there are now like out of control and just rampaging, killing anything that moves. Raynor and Phoenix are fighting against them. Uh, they're allied with, with um, 
Kerrigan as the Zerg Kerrigan, Queen of Blades, for a while, but eventually Kerrigan starts eliminating her allies, betraying them, which includes murdering Phoenix. And then Raynor has dialogue with her via, like, you know, <laughs> talking to each other over the uh, the Titan Tron or whatever, <laughs> where he's like, I'll never forgive you for this. I'm going to kill you. I swear it. And she's like, I gave him what he wanted. He was a Protoss. He wanted honorable death in battle. And Raynor's like, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to murder you for sure. Uh, I guess you got over it. Anyway, guys, when we come back next time, our mission is back in the saddle. We will depart with Jim Rayner. I'm the Serious JG. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time where I'll uh, have a little bit less hemming and hawing before we get into a mission. Bye-bye.